Hello, good evening. It's 10 p.m. and this is the late news on TV3. We're live from the news hub at Adisawi Kanda and Accra, as well as on your DSTV channel 279, streaming on Facebook and on 3news.com. Uh, let me first take you through the major news highlights on the local front for today. The Ashanti Regional Security Council has declared Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology a security zone until further notice. A statement signed by Regional Minister and Chairman of RECSEC, Simon Osemensa, urged the public, especially parents and guardians, to caution their wards to abide by the university's regulations and refrain from acts that may disturb the peace on the KNUST campus. And prosecutors handling the case against Chief Executive Officer of Men's Gold, Ghana Limited, Nana Pia Mensa, have pressed new charges against him. Nana Pia Mensa, also known as Nam One, was facing 13 charges last month, but now has 48 additional charges to answer, bringing it to a total of 61. And six suspects in the Isiakwa murder case have been remanded into prison custody to enable the prosecutor await advice from the Attorney General's office. Meanwhile, colleagues of the deceased teacher who were present in court say they want justice to be served. Right, so those were the major news highlights of the local front. Let's see what's happening on the international front. And we go straight to South Africa, where uh, South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa has condemned a wave of looting and violence that has targeted, that has mostly targeted foreign nationals. Dozens of people were arrested in Johannesburg on Monday. At least five people have been killed in the unrest. Other African governments have issued warnings to their citizens over the violence. British Prime Minister, British MPs on Tuesday triggered a vote that could allow them to stop Boris Johnson's pursuing a no Brexit deal, a challenge that the government warned uh, would prompt the Prime Minister to seek an election on October 14. More than three years after the United Kingdom voted in a referendum to leave the European Union, the outcome of the Brexit crisis remains uncertain with possible outcomes ranging from a turbulent no deal exist to abandoning the whole endeavor. And elsewhere on the international front, a makeshift bomb exploded under a passenger bus traveling in the violence-plagued central Mali region of Mopti on Tuesday, killing at least 14 people and wounding a total of 24. The vehicle hit the landmine while carrying 60 passengers through an area where the ethnic militias regularly kill civilians from rival groups and Islamist militants are also active. Right, uh, so those were our major news highlights. Uh, let's uh, start with our very first story tonight. The Ashanti Regional Security Council, RECSEC, has declared Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, KNUST, a security zone until further notice. A statement signed by the regional minister and chairman of RECSEC, Simon Osemensa, directed that any person or group of persons who may have grievances against the university uh, should report to the appropriate authorities for redress or necessary action. The statement also urged the public, especially parents and guardians, to caution their wards to abide by the university's regulations and refrain from acts that may disturb the peace on the campus. The statement further warned that persons who disturb the peace on campus will be dealt with in accordance with the law. Right, the Ashanti Regional Minister and Chairman of RECSEC, uh, Simon Osemensa, explained the rationale for the decision on News 360. 
actually we have intelligence that uh, some people are planning some illegal activities to disrupt the peace that we have on Kwame Nkrumah campus. And as regional security council, we cannot wait for anything to happen before we take other measures. But for that matter, we are being pre preemptive and making sure that what happened last year will not reoccur on the campus. What illegal activity is this, uh, if, if, you, if you care to tell us exactly what the situation is? Well, now, uh, what the public needs to know is what we put out there. You know, in security information management, at any time you should be able to determine what information is necessary for the public. So for now, this is what we think we, we or what we deem necessary for public consumption. As time goes on, you know, there is a need to come out with further details. We'll do that. I see. I ask this because the SRC also addressed the press uh, earlier in the day and they made the case that indeed Otunfo Seitu has indicated that if they are not excited about uh, decisions taken in the university, they can resort to him uh, uh, for, for redress. How did you arrive at this decision? Is the university authority also aware of this? When we as a regional security council, when we are taking decisions, uh, we look at the agency of the issue, we come out with a statement, and then consult all the other stakeholders if necessary. If it is not every security issue, you can do full consultation before you take the final decision. If you do that, what is going to happen is that uh, something could happen, and it will be unfortunate to tell people that we wanted full consultation before we put in such a measure. We put in these measures Unfortunately for us, Utunfo is out of the jurisdiction of the country, and therefore the need for this action. You realize when last year uh, the violence occurred, Utunfo again was outside the country, so we needed to take something, some immediate, immediate decision to arrest the situation and then inform him whenever he arrived as the chancellor of the university. And it's a similar thing we've done now. Now, prosecutors handling the case against the chief executive officer of Men's Gold, Ghana Limited, Nana Pia Mensa, have pressed new charges against him. Nana Pia Mensa, also known as Nam One, was facing 13 charges last month, but now has uh, 48 additional charges to answer, bringing it to a total charges of uh, 61. Salam Amena has filed this report. The charges include money laundering, unlawful deposit taking, sale of minerals without a license, and defrauding by false pretense. The latest charge sheet also has listed names of the persons allegedly defrauded by Nam One. They include Vulcan Basla, 350,000 cities, Kofi Chinebua, 100,000 cities, Godfred Odro Yabua, 94,500, Evelyn Trefour, 170,000 cities, Emmanuel Opon Kobi, 200,000 cities, Rahel Siam, 28,000 cities, and Frank Kunedwajiman, 26,000 cities. ASP Sylvester Asari, who is leading the state's prosecution, asked the circuit court on Tuesday for an adjournment to file the new charge sheet. This is the second time the charge sheet has been amended after the initial 7 was amended to 13 and now 61. Nana Pia Mensa, who is currently on bail after the circuit court varied his bail conditions, had been in detention in Dubai since December 7, 2018, when he was arrested on charges of defrauding a business partner there. The case has been adjourned to October 23. Right, I've been joined on the telephone lines now by the private legal practitioner, lawyer Hans uh, uh, Kodia, who uh, is a senior law lecturer at KNUST Faculty of Law. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you uh, very much for joining us uh, tonight on News at 10. Let's, uh, first of all, does the fresh charges from 16, from 13, we're told, to uh, 61 come to you as a surprise? Well, thank you very much, sir. Um... It is not a surprise to me 
And I may answer why. The reason is that if you look at our constitutional jurisprudence, talking about Ghana in particular, the Attorney General has a constitutional mandate under Article 88, Clause 3, to initiate and conduct all prosecutions in criminal offenses. Mm. And it is the sole prerogative of the Attorney General in all cases involving the commission of crimes to prescribe the appropriate charges against a particular person who has committed an offense against the state. Mm. So it is not a surprise to me because, as you know, initially he was charged with seven offenses, and it was increased to 30, and now it's going to 46. And as I said, the Attorney General has an exclusive mandate, it's a constitutional mandate, to determine how many charges she may come up against number one. Mm. So I'm not a surprise. It's not a surprise right. to me. But, but, but there are many who want to understand whether, in, in like you just mentioned, in jurisprudence, in, in the, the rule of uh, jurisprudence, this is perfectly permissible to, for him to be charged back and forth with additional charges. Does it not suggest, for example, that the uh, prosecution is just beating about the bush and has no clear-cut idea of what to charge him with? Well, as a matter of law, as a matter of law, it is not. You see, as I said, the Attorney General has the power to determine in the first place whether you have committed an offence. In most cases, provisional charges are prescribed, and when investigations are further conducted into the matter, the Attorney General may come out with fresh charges. For example, you may be charged with murder. The Attorney General may come out after very thorough investigations mm. and charge you with manslaughter. Right. So as he's facing these charges, I told you not even come out later and say, I'm charging you even with two charges. He has a right to do that. And he hasn't committed any any any, any offense. Right. So so, so can you hazard a guess why uh, these additional charges? I mean, you've given us the scenarios, the legal uh, procedures, and the fact that they, they they are normal, perfectly normal. But in this particular case with Nam One, can you guess why possibly additional charges were leveled against him, considering all he has gone through, going to Dubai and coming and being dragged to court here and there, the appeal against review of his. Uh, uh, bill terms and all of that? Yeah, you know, in his particular... Uh, Nam one's case is not a peculiar one. You know, we have had a series of some of these um, charges in the, in, the, in the country. Right. People committing similar offenses. So what the Attorney General is doing now, as a matter of fact, is legal. He has not committed any, 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 any breach of the law. What he's doing is permissible within the rules. And as I said... Sometimes you are charged with provisional charges. But when Attorney General is done with investigations through the police, then the Attorney General may settle down and say, based upon the facts presented to me, these are the appropriate charges I think right. we may come up against this person, in this particular case, number one. So it is normal, it is appropriate, and as I said, she decides right. what appropriate charges must be against number one. All right, so uh, he hasn't committed any, 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 any error. All right, um, so Kodia, we're grateful. Of law. We're grateful for your time. Thank you extremely. Uh, Hans Kodia is a senior lecturer, law lecturer at uh, KNUSD Faculty of Law and a private legal practitioner. This is News at 10, live from the News Hub at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. We're streaming live on Facebook and on 3news.com. We have more news for you. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now, government uh, through the Interior Ministry is taking steps to procure three helicopters and surveillance cameras for the Ghana Police Service to facilitate their work. Interior Minister Ambrose Derry disclosed this during a day's tour of the Buno region. Five police officers have been killed in the line of duty within a period of 30 days. In a bid to provide greater protection for men and women of the service, government has taken steps to procure three helicopters and cameras for police security surveillance. 
during a day's tour of the Bono region. Interior Minister Ambrose Derry noted the police performs a critical role in the country's democratic process of securing peace and stability. Hence, government will do its possible best to protect them. These officers died in the course of duty. They died as heroes and heroes of peace. They died in the course of service. And we consider them methods. They are heroes in our lives forever. The Bono Regional Police Commander, COP Ousu Boatin, requested government to provide the service with vehicles and other essential logistical support to facilitate their work. This has in fact affected the morale of the personnel and I know your presence and words of motivation will revamp their spirit to give out their best in the execution of their core mandate of protecting life and property. In fact, your presence will have a positive impact in the performance of our duties. The minister in his entourage later interacted with personnel of the Ghana National Fire Service and the Prison Service. Officers during the interactive sessions reiterated the need for the provision of accommodation, logistics and improved conditions of work. And family of the late overlord of Bimbela, Anna Dasan and Dani, says the appointment of a sole mediator uh, by government on the chieftaincy issues in Bimbela is an attempt to undermine the ruling of the Supreme Court. At a press conference, uh, the family noted the stance of government is simply to cover up the murder of the late chief. Speaking on Monday, August 2, at the Mantambo Palace in Bimbila, the family rejected calls by President Ekufu Ado to submit to a committee led by Togwe Sri to mediate the age-long chieftaincy litigation. According to the family, the Supreme Court on May 23, 2008, unanimously ruled in favor of the Andani Dasani family in a case brought before it by the Nakwana Salifu Dawuni family seeking the court to pronounce as null and void the enskinment of the late Bimbila Na Andani Dasana Abdullahi. Having read the judgment, where is the ambiguity to merit the appointment of a sole mediator? Where is the dispute to be mediated upon? Again, how could all the eight chiefs of the two lower courts and the five justices of the Supreme Court of Ghana all get it wrong? The family questioned the stance of government for a sole mediator, saying it will be dangerous for the security of Bimbila. With due respect to the president and to the Aumufia, we appreciate the need for third party intervention in a situation like this and bringing to finality the crisis in Nanu. But we think they will have to do it without biases as we think this move is characterized with conflict of interest. The late Bimbila Na and Dani Dasana Abdullahi was murdered on June 19, 2014 by some unknown assailant. The government then placed a 10,000 bounty on the head of Tolingna Abre Madamba, who was the prime suspect. On August 16 this year, President Ekufu Addo, as part of his two-day tour of the northern region, hinted his government would bring an end to the over a decade chieftaincy dispute in Bimbila. This was followed by a formal appointment of the Awomefia of Anlong State, Togbe Sri, as the sole mediator through the Minister of Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs, the National Security Minister, and the Volta Region Minister. And the minority in parliament has accused government of funding the Ghana Amalgamated Trust. That's why it claims that it is a private initiative. Addressing the press on Tuesday, the minority said 800 million CDs of taxpayers' money has been injected into the funding of the Ghana Amalgamated Trust in clear breach of the law establishing it. The government last year set up the Ghana Amalgamated Trust, a special purpose vehicle, to recapitalize some five local banks that needed some top-up. 
This is to help the local banks meet Bank of Ghana's new minimum capital requirements of 400 million CDs. The five banks under the Ghana Amalgamated Trust GAT umbrella are ADB, Prudential Bank, UMB, Sahel Omni Bank, and NIB. Government's decision to support the five banks through the GAT program suffered a setback in March this year as Parliament deferred the passage of a 2 billion CDs sovereign guarantee for use by the Trust. After a debate on the Finance Committee report which recommended its approval by a majority decision, the House did not have the required numbers by law to approve the guarantee. Minority spokesperson on finance and MP for Bolgatanga Central Isaac Adongo at a press conference said the actions of the central bank point to a deliberate attempt to collapse some banks. The Bank of Ghana, just like the government's approach to major national programs, adopted a reform as you go approach for a very delicate and interconnected industry. No one knew what to expect. For instance, savings and loans companies didn't know what to expect except threats of collapse resulting in panic withdrawals. To date, rural and community banks who suffered unnecessary panic withdrawals packed by reckless comments of the Bank of Ghana governor do not know what to expect. Savings and loans companies were collapsed before issues of minimum capital and recovery plans were contemplated by the Bank of Ghana. The minority is also demanding full disclosure of the 23 billion CDs spent in the cleanup in the banking sector. We wish to ask, why will the government be ready to borrow 14 billion to close down banks and a further 7 billion to close down savings and loans companies as well as 2 billion to shut microfinance companies? Is it not clear to the vice president that it would have been cheaper to address the challenges from their roots while keeping jobs for our people. That is, why will a government spend 23 billion to put people out of work? Uh, the Ashanti Regional Chairman of the New Patriotic Party, Bernard Inchi Bosiako, has vowed to keep infiltrating the rank and file of the National Democratic Congress, NDC, if this is the only way to ensure the MPP stays in power. Former Municipal Chief Executive for EGISO in the SWAL, John Muhammad Administration, Free Fire Mwaponko, had earlier cautioned the party leadership against Wuntemi's political exploitation, but the unwavering chairman has defended his political strategy. Can you tell us, can you confirm that indeed within the leadership of the NDC in the Ashanti region, there are people that you financed and ensured that they, they really get those positions? You see, uh, you have asked me uh, uh, the question. I will answer you in Proverbs, you know. You see, sometimes God, you know, or Jesus heals somebody, you know. Then he said, uh, go and spread the message. Sometimes he said, don't tell anyone. You know, so it's the same thing. We have some things. That is why I keep on mentioning the strategy. You know, some you can say, some you cannot say. You know, the stealing and the cheating, you know, printing ballot papers and stuff. All the, you know, you know, God revealed to me. I cut them. Uh, chairman, let's talk about the uh, Yamwa Ponko um, in, in recent time. In fact, he, he's also making some. I mean, he's coming out with some interesting revelations that you ensure that he is removed as the MC um, of uh, Josu Jabin. Did, did you really uh, pay for his removal? My brother, I have already said it. You see, I said anything that I would do to help my party. I will do it, you know. Anything, anything, anything I have to do to 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 you know to let MPP you know stay in power, winning the the power, you know that one is non-negotiable. So that is why I talk about the strategy. 
I talk about the strategy. Moses used the strategy. So, who to me is the Moses? <laughs> you know, so I have the strategy. And that's how we wrap up with the bulletin. Thanks very much for your time. On behalf of the crew, good night. There is more news at 3news.com.